Here we go, pulling the front clip off my 1989 first gen Cummins 5.9 liter Dodge 250. It's a 1989, but it's got a 1975 front clip, doors and box on it. So it's got a bit of an old school look to it. It's gonna be a little bit different than the normal, but I rear-ended somebody and you can see the body lines here are just terrible. Um, it mashed this end upwards. So like right here, you got a big gap at the bottom of the door and it's all tight at the top. So that's no good, no bueno. So we're gonna take it all apart, pull everything apart, get into it here and sort it all out and put it back together. Hopefully it sits a little straighter than this in the end. We got, we have here, inch, I should measure that, but that's about an inch and a half. All right, it's good to always have a magnetic tray to keep your uh, bolts and nuts and everything all unsorted. Next up, I'm gonna remove the bumper. So right under the bumper here, you got three simple bolts. You pull those off both sides. magnetic trays paying off. I mean, you can keep all your little screws in groups, right? So you know exactly where they all come from, how many you got. Um, if I didn't have that, they'd all just be kind of scattered on the table. We now have all six bolts out. The bumper should be free to come off. There we go. So we're only about half an hour in. We've already removed the grill and now the front bumper. So here's what they lifted the truck on. And you can see when I rear-ended that guy, it pushed it all backwards. You can see on that next one down there too, it's pushed backwards. Um, you see that, that bolt in that wheel well's tight? Come around here, that one's stick. there's a half inch gap on it. Come around here, we're looking at that. So this whole panel has been pushed that way, smushed in. Beautiful unit, fully in love still, fully in love. This is a labor of love. Next, I'm gonna pull out these headlights. These simple uh, Phillips screwdrivers. Take this little bezel ring off. Go into the back there, unplug the harness. That's all you gotta do. Out of the back is just three prongs, nice and easy. Pull it out. Make sure you keep your little weather cover intact. Okay, so it's the end of day one working on this thing. Okay, we're back out here day two on the old Dodge. I've been looking over what the next step is. I've got the whole front pulled apart now. I got the bumper off. Um, there is this one little piece right here I can pull off and then I'll get a better view underneath. But first thing I wanna do is get that cowling off the top there. Once I remove that, then I can get to the bolts at the back of the fender. So the first thing you gotta do is take off the wipers. Okay, so this is what you're looking at here. You'll see a little tab on the side here. If you open it up, you'll see a little tab there. Now the tab, that's what comes into play. What works for me is take the pliers, grab your tab, and what you wanna do is you wanna put pressure upwards, like you're pulling it up towards the sky and then towards you. Out. Okay, now once I get both the wipers off, I can go ahead and remove this cowling here 
and I'll be able to see those two top bolts on the fender here. We got a bolt here and we got screws all along the front. I only have two screws in the middle. These ones have already been removed by somebody. Okay, so I got the two screws in the middle removed and the one screw on the far end removed. This is the last one right here. You can kind of see it on the side of the screen. That's what's holding them in. All right, so now that whole cowling is loose. Yeah, there it is, just slides right out of that. So in the end, it's gonna slide right back up in there. I gotta remember that. There she is. All right, she's coming out. And that's what it looks like underneath. Morning, you guys. Here we are, day three. And I just wanted to quickly tell you guys about something. I do have Chooch and Diesel merch. Any of you Dodge Cummins lovers, we got the first gen right on the front there. Got the hats, snapbacks, got the sleeve print going down the sleeves here, the Chooch and Diesel merch. We got t-shirts, hats, hoodies, uh, window decals, stickers, stuff like that. There's also a powerful woman female logo, which has like really cool turquoise and greens in it and stuff. Pinks and purples, so the color scheme is awesome. Uh, the merch line is cool. Uh, get at me in the comments if you'd like to purchase some of this clothing. Now today is day three. We're back out here. We're moving kind of slow on it, which is fine. Uh, doing more thinking than working, really. But uh, today what's going to happen is I'm going to take this fender off. Okay, so <clears throat> one more thing. Before I go into the fenders and the hood and whatnot, I'm going to pull this front part off here. So uh, first thing to do is pull these headlights out of it, these little front blinker lights. So I've already done that. They're just little Phillips screws. Um, pull them out. Get it all loose. The both sides are out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. One in the middle, one over here. So for this, we're using a 7 16 And that's what those look like. Okay, now what we're looking at is the fender is completely exposed, ready to take off. Before I remove the battery, I just want to say I did just install a new one of these uh, battery straps, we'll call it. Uh, it's probably 12 bucks at Lord Co. And if the DOT pulls you over, they can give you a truck inspection just on the fact that your battery isn't strapped down properly. And I just had a bungee cord like a lot of the old rednecks do have, but I'm just trying to avoid problems in the future, so that's why it's good to have a battery strap. Another similar looking bolt. Yeah, just as I expected, you take the two back ones out and pivot on this front set. So one thing I've done is just put that block there so that if it does come slamming down, it hits that block. We did it! Oh, and as you can see here, the Dodge parts are really starting to stack up now. That's a beautiful old bird bath hood from the 70s. It's a 1975 hood right there. Okay, now the hood's off, and all that's left to do is pull these fenders off. I'm, all, I'm obviously nervous because I've never pulled this truck apart this much, so I'm hoping it all goes back together good. Good thing to do is just go through and give them all a quick shot of WD-40. These ones in here, they're rusty. You know, so you're gonna wanna...
I thought it'd be best just to start sorting them. So you get your post-it note, start putting what you got. And that way when you go to put everything back together, I mean, it just makes more sense. I got some more piles over here in the tray, but I know what those are for already. Okay, so we got that one out, no problem. The WD-40 seems to be the call. You gotta get it on there because um, everything is pretty rusted up. Anyways, what you can see now, the fender's starting to move. Okay, so we're already free. Now I wanna show you what I've developed. This super scientific device for getting all the way through the door. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. I got a whole bunch of extension pieces here because it is a really long reach to get all the way there. Then when you see when you open the door, you can see it in there. That's how to get it out. Open the door up, get your hand in there, and pull it out. You never know if it's going to come out, it is, but look how shitty and rusty all those are. That's why the WD-40 is important, because everything's duped up, rusted in, and if you have to force it really hard, it normally breaks the clip that it's grabbing into, because those clips that they slide over the sheet metal, it's rusted out, the clip is thinner than the uh, panel, so when you go to turn that screw, it just breaks the clip. spread away a bit. Let's see if I can grab onto it now. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what's going on now. Things have kind of fallen apart and taken a turn for the worst. The body gap there is actually almost worse now. Like it's pretty big the whole way. At least we're not screaming tight on the top. What's happened though is I got my bolts in the bottom and then I went to throw my, my one that goes in the door there. But the problem is, I got it in there and then it did what I was saying before is it broke the clip and it's free spinning. So I'm I'm missing a half inch there that this panel is supposed to be tucked in. So, you know, when you come this way, you can see that. So I've almost made it worse. Let's be honest here, I've almost made it worse. Um, I'm kind of nervous about it all now. I'm trying to put it all back together. So I threw my bolt back in the top at the back corner and you know i'm starting to bolt it back together this way and it's kind of lining up i've had to use my pry bar to get in here because like some of these holes just are not lining up the best um, but basically i'm tucking tail turning it around and putting it all back together because i don't think i was able to finish to fix that anyways so at least it's been a good video learning how to take the whole front end of this truck apart i mean it's all it's not all for nothing because everything's just a learning process i'll slap it all back together and hopefully in the process the hood goes on correctly and maybe i can make a few body lines up front look a little better in the process like i know this hood like one side of the truck is higher but i've smashed some of that down now with the with my tool so hopefully everything goes back together good we'll see so it didn't take me much more than about a half an hour to get everything all back together. Um, obviously the hood's not on, the grill's not on, uh, the bottom part of the grill and the bumper, but it should be ready to run. I just threw the battery back in. Um, I got that top cowling back on. That went on pretty good. I had to use a flathead screwdriver to uh, kind of slide that under there. And then um, those windshield wipers just went right on with that little sliding lock. Like, you know, you just put them on, slide that little thing over. So that was nice and easy. Um, the hood here though, I can't really install it today because I can't even pull that down on my own. I'm gonna need two people to come and put this hood back on with me. Um, but other than that, everything's all hooked up. It should fire up. Something to note is when you take the windshield wipers off, make sure you remember what position they were in. Because when you go turn the switch on, they're gonna just hope that they were in the same spot. So I'm pretty sure I got those right, and that's the first thing I'm going to try. Get my little key on. Okay, let's try these wipers. Yeah. A little weak. They're always a little weak. 
sure they'll kick in better. Okay, let's go ahead and try to fire it up. Oh, she just fired right up. Okay, we're in neutral. The horn works. <laughs> Everything's push button. Get the fuel pump going. That's the rad fan. She did fire right up though. That's good. Okay, headlights are working. So to wrap that up, I didn't really fix the body line. I actually ended up making it kind of worse. But I did learn a whole bunch in the process. I learned how to take the whole front clip off. Okay, side note. When putting your hood back on, when you're on your own, I just want to point out, using a piece of rebar is great because it digs into the ground. You can put a block in front of it. It acts as your second hand. It locks in right under there because before I had the rebar, I just had it on some wood and it kept sliding into the windshield. So that grabbed it nicely. That block prevents it from kicking out. And now what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and I got my first bolt in and I'm gonna go do the same on the other side. Also, since I'm under a tent, uh, to make it a little easier, I have two straps rigged up, just pulling the uh, arm mechanism a little bit, which just lessens the angle, makes it a little easier. So the hood doesn't have to be straight up and down to get it on. Okay, so we got the hood back on. It was a little bit of a journey, but not too bad. I mean, I got everything bolted back together. I'm pretty nervous right now because honestly, pulling this hood down is gonna tell the true story of like, I don't even know if that hood is gonna come down over top of this panel because we did tweak a bunch of stuff. I was hitting right here with the uh, jackhammer, trying to like bend stuff around. And um, you know, in the end, this body line here still is pretty bad but at least at the top it isn't completely jammed in so you know it's a little bit open here um, I can live with that the bottoms pretty flush with each other as far as that goes so that's not as bad um, I was afraid I was gonna go backwards but I'm starting to think now that it's gonna be okay uh, I got this cowling on obviously we're a little bit a little bit higher right there kind of annoying um, but it was always like that and this was like pinched way up in there so those are pretty nice body lines um, okay so I'm gonna bring this hood down and we're gonna see how everything jives I'm just gonna keep an eye on this body line as I bring her down well, it's actually starting to line up okay oh it's actually coming pretty tight oh my god Look at that. That actually came out so nice. How's this side? Totally messed. Okay, that's not good at all. This side was always pretty bad. It was always sticking up a bit, but it's pretty pronounced now. So I'm gonna have to make some changes there. But um, as far as this side goes, I'm, I'm digging that. that. That looks nice now over here where we were working. Um, we are still sitting a bit high right here. Maybe that's just hood adjustment. Look at that. Look at that. That's why I love these old trucks. Okay, this side's looking pretty good. I mean, I think I, oh yeah. I mean, that's factory. We are back to factory other than the gap right there. But the gap right there is partially because of this bolt when I was trying to put it back in, it lost its backing, it was free spinning. This should be sucked in more. And it isn't so that really pisses me off but I can live with that it's just an old tractor so now that I know the hood actually goes on actually let's let's go ahead and close it fully that there is slammed closed look at those body lines folks am I a genius I just get into things and try that worked out great though 1975 still looking good now when I get this grill on, I'm gonna be interested to see what we had. We had an inch and a half gap there. I think it's gonna be a lot smaller now. I mean, this body line's totally crap. We're sticking up high too. But I can adjust that on the hood. So maybe I can adjust and get this side good too. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just put the rest of it together because I know 
that we're at least working here. Forgot to mention this one more thing. Look at that body line. Even the whole way. So I'm pretty pleased with that whole corner there. Okay, we got the bottom front clip part back in. We got the blinker lights in. Now we're gonna go put the bumper back on. Yeah, when I had that strap on there, it did kind of bend this down. So I do have some body work to do. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, that should be perfect. Okay, got the bumper on, and I am gonna relocate that plate over to the proper spot, find some proper bolts so we're not so shabby. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put the grill on. I'm having a hard time right now because this is the new grill. A guy in town sold me a new grill after I rear-ended the guy and rocked up this one. But this one here always had a really nice shiny chrome finish to it, which matched the shiny bumper. And when I put this brand new one on, it's more of a, a matte finish. You know, it just didn't have that blingy look when I pulled up. So, I don't know, I pulled the old one out. I'm having a hard time. I almost want to throw it back on because it is pretty bling bling. But this one's just so mint. Okay, so I decided to go with the old blingy grill. Um, I bolted it on and it looks great. It fits perfectly. Look how tight these body lines are. The whole hood, I mean, if I pop the hood, you're gonna see that unevenness again. Let's go ahead and actually see how much. Check out my hood latch. Okay, so we got a tight fit on that side and we got about an inch on this side. So we did make progress here too. I'm actually coming out of this whole job super happy. I actually uh, put it back together and made some changes and I feel good about it. So the happy coincidence here is when I go to put these bezels in on the old grill, it works so perfect. I got all these little plastic grommets to screw to. Whereas on the new one, new-ish, it only had two. Two on each side. See, there's nothing in there, nothing for the screw to grab to. So the bezels were kind of flopping around. And now I got the old one back in. Look at that, there's plastic in all four of them there. So it'll be a nice tight fit and just looks super sexy. Look how shiny that is. Obviously, this is where I make contact. My rear end of the guy, bam! Crunch that in, but uh, and like everything was all bent up. The whole uh, bumper right here was bent into a V. I smashed that out with a sledgehammer. Good enough, right? And you can see right here, right there is actually bowed out quite a bit. So that's where a lot of the damage did happen. Okay, we got it all back together, shined up, and uh, ready to go pick up some smokes and head to your mom's house for some grub.